consideration of competitiveness and profit. Second path, fight poverty and exclusion. Poverty is a different issue than inequality. You know, poor, the poor suffer because they do not have enough, not because others have more. So let us focus on fighting poverty and exclusion, provide food and, and, and health security, end precarious work, end zero contracts, extend social insurance to all EU citizens, including the self-employed. Nowadays, there are more and more self-employed people without any coverage, raise the minimum wage, focus on active job creation and jobs can be created through social enterprise, not just leave it to the market. Give the EU mandate to supplement the national social security systems. Make permanent the employment reinsurance scheme that was temporarily introduced recently during the lockdown. In short, create a trans-European social safety net based on European denizenship not just citizenship. Everybody who resides in Europe should have that minimum safety net. The third road, many of those policies which destabilized our societies were adopted for the sake of ensuring competitiveness in the global economy. That was the other very dangerous dogma. We need to insulate our societies from the competitive pressures of global capitalism by changing the nature of globalization. Now, trade can be a very powerful tool which the European Union already has in its hands for social policy. We need to incorporate high standards of environmental, labor and consumer protection in all of the trade agreements of the European Union. In this way, we will break free from the short-term considerations of profit which have brought our society to the brink of destruction. In this way, we will also bring together the social justice agenda with the climate justice agenda, without which no broad public support for the European Green Deal could be secured. This is for me, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alberta. And uh, I must say that uh, uh, it is so nice to hear to hear your proposals coming of, uh, from an economist, because normally the traditional economists, they have a completely different view, but more and more we know that uh, very important names also listening from time to time, Estelle Duflo, who is uh, the uh, Nobel Prize uh, uh, for Economy for 2019, there he realized that there is a completely different approach on uh, uh, the economy and what does it mean economy ecology and ecos because the, the greek word it means really how to take care of the people uh, so i would like very briefly uh, to welcome uh, uh, roger grot vassing uh, which uh, as i said before uh, uh, you are the deputy mayor of amsterdam it's a big pleasure to have you uh, with us and um, I, I would like maybe to give the, uh, the other speakers the possibility to, uh, to intervene before you, so you are entering also slowly, slowly in the debate. And I come uh, straight uh, to uh, Ernest, because um, indeed, uh, Ernest, uh, you followed uh, as also European parliamentarian the previous financial crisis. And what does it mean, uh, the austerity measures and the cuts in our uh, member states? And uh, it is not uh, just casual, this is not the only reason, but it is not casual that some of our countries, they really suffer more than others because, because also partially of the austerity measures, they had to cut a lot to uh, health issues, education issues, uh, in order to be able to respect the 3% of the uh, uh, stability pact. So my question to you is, uh, um, to first of all, a very practical question. I would like to know if uh, really you think that with this recovery plan uh, uh, proposed by van der Leyen, they are gray areas where we can go back to new austerity 
uh, periods. So I know that this is a question you put yourself to van der Leyen directly two days ago, and you continue really to dig in to find out what's going on. And at the same moment, I uh, would like to ask you from the Southern perspective, which are the areas where you think that we will need co new competencies for the European Union in uh, the coming uh, in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's really a big pleasure to be with you uh, today in the uh, in this conference in the framework of the of the EGP Council. Uh, oh, it's a big challenge, of course. I under, I've been uh, attending many councils and having to have an online council. Probably it's not easy, but I want to thank and to congratulate the team for making that possible i think it's very important um listen one of the things that we are very worried now uh is that if uh the answers to the economic crisis that will follow COVID are different depending on which member state you live or in which member state you're operating as a company we will tr create a huge divergence in the single market and we will create a huge divergence as well in terms of employment and in terms of economic activity. And this is unfortunately what is going on at the moment. So you have countries with a lot of fiscal space who are investing massively in their economy and others with less fiscal space because also they come from an economic crisis and they have a greater debt burden. And this is particularly the case for many Southern Europeans who have less fiscal space and are intervening less the economy. This is important to understand because this is exactly the reason why we need a European recovery plan. Because if we do not have that plan at European level, the, our economies in the single market will completely diverge. And that would really put a threat into the single market and the Eurozone. That's the reason why we need the recovery plan. So now we have a proposal which is limited, but, I, but we have, uh, we have um, um, uh, evaluated it as positive and a step further for, for, uh, forward because we have half uh, a billion in transfers for the uh, uh, economies more in need. And this is, of course, very positive. It's the first time that the European institutions will issue debt to make transfers. So in a way, we are, I know this is a, uh, an ugly word in some member states, but we are, in a way, mutualizing part of the debt that we will be issued uh, in the, uh, uh, to respond to the crisis. And this is extremely positive. Uh, also, it is positive that this money will not be disbursed only in terms of GDP and GDP per capita, it will also be disbursed taking into account criteria, criteria such as increase in unemployment, which means that the, the funds will be disbursed in those member states more in need. So this is positive. Now, will this fund, uh, to answer your question, Vula, will this fund be associated to further austerity cuts? And this is one of the big questions and big debates we will have in the future in the European Parliament, because yes, indeed, in the recovery and resilience facility, which is, which is the main legal instrument of that package, uh, you have a provision that says that uh, a member state not respecting the fiscal framework will be subject uh, to uh, a stop in the disbursement of funds. So if you don't respect the fiscal framework at a certain moment, the Commission will be allowed to stop disbursing the funds from the facility. Now, of course, the fiscal framework now is extremely flexible. Uh, and actually, one could even say it is suspended because, as you probably know, uh, the Commission activated the general escape clause, so there is no uh, SGP, there is no two-pack, no six-pack applying to our economies, and for the moment this is not really, really an issue. But if the recovery plan lasts for four years, uh, I think it's very difficult to think that the institutions will keep the SGP suspended for that long. In that sense, if the countries of the South, but not only, come out of this crisis with a greater uh, burden debt, and with higher uh, um, uh, deficits, uh, of course, if you have that provision, it can be very well that in two years, when the EGP will kick in again, somebody will tell you, if you don't start consolidating your public finances very fast, then we will suspend uh, uh, the, the, those funds. This is very dangerous. I think it's very dangerous to imagine that we will have now a year of investment, but, but dramatically go back to uh, a very too fast consolidation of our public finances, because that would be repeating the mistakes of 2011, 2012, where our societies in the South suffered a lot from cuts. That's the reason why we think that this recovery fund should be more like cohesion funds and less like the bailouts in 2008. And that's why we are fighting, and we will fight as Greens in the European Parliament, 
Of course, you have conditions on those funds because we do have conditions. We have green, we want green conditioning. We want, of course, that the commission is able to orient it how this money is spent. We want conditions as well on rule of law, but we don't want this to be used in order to force austerity very rapidly in two years' time. So this is, of course, a big debate. There will be a big fight. And this is one of our priorities in the parliament. And to answer your second question, Vula, very rapidly, I don't want to take more time that, uh, that I was given. Uh, what new issues to come uh, to affront uh, the problems, uh, the social problems that we have at European level? First thing to understand, the wounds from the last crisis are still there. Very, very, that's very clear in terms of unemployment, in terms of inequalities, in terms of difficulties accessing housing, uh, uh, precarious labor markets, these wounds are still there. We need to address those. And I agree with you. I think there is I think there is a will from the Commission to speed up some of the proposals incorporated in the in the in the pillar of the European social rights. So I think the Commission announced the other day that the framework for a minimum salary at European level would be, will be speed up. That's very good news. We have now the program to finance the temporary uh, um, uh, unemployment programs in some member states. This is not yet a reinsurance scheme at European level, but it's a first step towards that direction. This is positive. We want as well to have a directive of minimum income. This is an old project. By the way, some member states are now introducing schemes of minimum income, like in Spain, which I think this is very positive. So all these issues, what we need to do, the, the, those are all old projects. We need to speed up those. And then, and I will end here, Vula, to also to answer your question, what new areas we need to focus on? And housing is one of those, very clearly. We have uh, real urgencies in housing in many member states. Of course, housing is not a directly attributed competence to the European institution, but that, the institutions, but that doesn't mean that the European Union doesn't have tools to, uh, to try to promote and to help easing the housing situations. For instance, the European Commission has full powers to regulate finance, and we can regulate housing bubbles. We can regulate investments in housing. This, the supervisors and the regulators can do at European level. We have the European Investment Bank, where we can uh, continue promoting further the, um, the promotion of public housing. And thirdly, and I will end here, we, can, we have as well the possibility, for instance, of treating investments in public housing differently inside our fiscal framework so there are issues that we can do and i do think that housing has to become also a priority in the future so thank you so much and i will be more than happy to follow up with the debate on the questions yes. thank you ernest and i think that you touched two issues obviously the question of the finances and also what uh, albena brought before how what you finance and in which direction uh, you will put uh, this energy in this uh, budget because we need a change of uh, of the paradigm that we had until now uh, so ludovic from uh, your perspective uh, from the trade unions i would like to know uh, a little bit more on your strategy uh, to bring forward the social agenda and uh, uh, which kind of uh, alliances you try to get, uh, which kind of lobby you try to organize in order really to make sure that uh, there is a real support uh, to uh, the social dimension, to the jobs, and, uh, uh, and that we are not entering in a big social crisis linked to the loss of unemployment and the precarity and all the rest we have discussed until now. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so uh, thank you for the invitation uh, for in inviting uh, the trade unions in this debate. I think it's really essential for us to bring the voice of the workers in the debate on the recovery, on uh, what, how the COVID-19 is uh, affecting our economies and what uh, should uh, be the future uh, for uh, workers and for all the economies. So for us, it's important with this uh, COVID-19 crisis uh, to recognize how essential workers have been to tackle the sanitary crisis. In order to give them a future and to give our society a future, there's a need, of course, for massive uh, fiscal stimulus uh, underpinned by a European Union able to mobilize resources and investment in order to address the relevant risk of huge recession and unemployment following the emergency phases. So we already see that there are a lot of workers uh, in unemployment or in uh, part-time schemes uh, or part-time unemployment. So we have to address uh, the consequence that the 
the uh, sanitary crisis will have in the economy. For the ETUC representing vo the voice of millions of workers all over Europe, it, this recovery has to be designed in a way uh, to build a more sustainable, inclusive and fair uh, economic model um, where the environment is respect, where digital innovation is put at the service of people, where uh, the European economy is protect with massive quality job uh, creation, uh, with a fair distribution between profit uh, and wage, with uh, workers and social rights uh, protected, uh, also putting the question of public service, uh, particularly health care and education and training, uh, should be restored, reinforced, and where uh, also uh, universal uh, social protection should be ensured. Uh, so we have lived uh, in, since 10 years, decade of austerity and cuts. So uh, during which uh, business interests and profits have always come before the protection of the people, but also of the planet uh, and of uh, social justice. Um, so this has to be fixed. We cannot go back to the business as usual. And any recovery strategy, in our sense, has to be based in, on an ambitious, fair and inclusive approach. Public service. Um, healthcare and education, social protection systems, social infrastructures must be strongly supported. If you see, ex expect the recovery strategy to focus also on the principle of just transition uh, at all levels of reinforcing EU industries affected uh, and the economic sectors, on defending jobs in Europe, on supporting workers affected by insolvency and restructuring process due to the crisis, redesigning also the European supply chains uh, by making um, uh, by ma making our trade policy fairer and more inclusive, particularly through binding and enforceable labor uh, provision and tr in trade agreement. So, as I said, recovery uh, should uh, not be back to business as usual as before. It's not the time for austerity. It's not the time for cuts. It's not the time for unbearable fiscal conditions. Uh, s then. It's important for us to say that citizens and workers uh, want a fairer and greener uh, Europe that works uh, better for all. So we should not give money to uh, businesses without exercising some control on how they behave. The recovery plans funding should be conditional on providing decent jobs, uh, on paying taxes and working toward agreed climate goals through uh, just transition. It is important that any company refusing to negotiate with the trade unions also must not receive any grants, funds and other public procurement uh, contracts. So that's why we think that the European Green Deal is also the political compass for the years to come. So it can be improved. Uh, we need at least that it give uh, our us the political uh, compass. We need a climate law that ends, uh, that uh, puts a climate target to uh, climate neutrality uh, to 2050, but also an, inter, uh, an interim target of minus 55% by 2030. But this should go not only as a, uh, as a target, but also with the concrete tools of implementation uh, for the strong social requirement that, uh, that this transformation needs. That's why we push uh, so much on the need for uh, the European Green Deal investment plan to match the challenge at stake. So we need really more money to put also on the table uh, through a more effective and fair taxation, bigger EU budget, the use of all instruments of the EEB, the ECB. Uh, so massive public investment is needed to, uh, for the Green Deal investment and just transitions uh, is also at the core of this uh, strategy. Just transition is not only uh, to help uh, some regions to face the, the question. Just transition is the, also the main uh, uh, should be at the core of every strategy linked to climate because this is the only way to ensure the workers uh, uh, and the citizens uh, a support uh, to climate policies. If uh, climate policies means uh, massive dismissals, then workers will turn their back and uh, vote for populist forces. And this is not uh, what we want. And this is uh, how we have to link uh, the uh, carbon neutral economy 
and uh, just transition at the same time. So it's really important uh, for us. And I would just detail a little bit what just transition means for us. Because uh, it's yeah, maybe I'm really sorry if yeah. you don't mind, because um, I, we have uh, not so much time. Uh, but for me, what it is very relevant of what you said is that uh, um, finally, also for the trade unions, the question of the Green Deal is in the center of the social recovery. And uh, this gives me a lot of hope that we will be able together, and we can come maybe back a little bit more on the details afterwards, to uh, create this necessary dynamic to link the two things in order also to change uh, the model of uh, development. Because until now, uh, we felt, uh, let's say politically, that you have been more close to some political families than others, but I realized now that it's the time and more and more we are also coming closely to a common agenda and you can find in our political family a big ally on issues like trade which you know what is our position very close to yours and on other issues which of course we know that they are very relevant for uh, uh, for uh, for the social uh, dimension and the social justice um, so, if you don't mind, I just uh, change uh, the speaker and we go to Catherine. And uh, a lot, uh, Catherine, has been said. I saw you uh, moving positively and enthusiastically your head. So, uh, I would like just uh, uh, to uh, ask you, um, uh, of course, maybe to also comment the other interventions. But I know that you have worked a lot on the minimum income and for years. And uh, I, I would like just to have your feeling if you think that uh, uh, slowly, slowly, we will really manage to get this uh, directive and this uh, legal framework to, uh, to create this basis. You have been extremely active on uh, a women's issue, on uh, fighting uh, the, the pay gap to really uh, make sure that women uh, uh, they uh, are entering and they have equal rights on the labor market. And also you have, uh, uh, through your experience, be extremely active on issues against discrimination, but also linked to special needs uh, of uh, um, people with special uh, disabilities. So uh, I would like just to ask you if you can uh, uh, present what are your main ideas and of course how we can really achieve them politically. Thanks, Vula. Um, thanks to to the others um, on the panel. Um, thanks for the invitation. Um, where can I start? Yeah. Uh, when I was a student and I finished my my college time, it was in 2007 and 8 uh, when the first crisis started and uh, we were good educated and had no jobs. Um, I would like to um, break the dogma or what, what I did in the last 10 years is the kind of green dogma and uh, Ursula von der Leyen's dogma was um, jobs can solve the problems of poverty. Um, and then um, I was like, yeah, jobs and education can be a part of it, solving the problems of poverty. But what is with the people? people with disabilities or homeless people or name it, who are not able to work or will never take part um, on, on the first labor market, so-called first labor market. I'm focused in, in my work as a, a vice chair and coordinator, a member of the social committee, is to get focused on people with disabilities and homeless people. On, on that level, I ask for a homeless strategy I ask for um, that the uh, member states, especially then Germany, finally adopt the anti-discrimination directive, what's related to people with disabilities, and uh, get get a place on the first labor market. Helena Dali, the commissioner for equality, promised me in the hearing when she was uh, applying for that job. Uh, she promised me on my question, of course, the European Union stop financing uh, the institutions for pe people with disabilities. During the crisis, we uh, heard people get isolated, 
they they stayed at home and people with disabilities people elder people for example they were forced to stay at home they were uh, locked uh, in their homes and they didn't even know why they couldn't get out they wasn't asked even asked for so they institutions hurt the people's labor rights and uh, civil rights so that was one of the main issues i was focused on and and fought against to to stop with that because we must be it must be clear the COVID crisis is not over we have no medication or anything else against that virus we are waiting for a second wave maybe we will have the second wave maybe not so the whole drama is not over to get a positive view yeah i'm super optimistic if i compare it with a crisis 10 years ago today the commission uh ursula von der leyen and the parliament is much more focused on minimum wage i welcome that and i guess that we will start uh no i i i'm quite positive that we will get a minimum wage but what about the people who are not working what the minimum income um that what happened in spain right now what are the countries eastern european countries who has no minimum wage or, or kind of quite of a kind of a social net so um maybe these are the two three issues or or targets i'm focused on and we should or we as greens should be focused on as well so our target group are the weakest of the weak uh, the poorest of the poor people with disabilities elder people homeless people uh stop cutting the usf the esf fund the esf fund is super important for local institutions ngos initiatives in our member states if we cut the money or the commission cuts the money then we have a huge problem in our cities towns or regions that must be clear so we have to invest in these funds uh, i was in the local uh, parliament eight years um for many many years so i don't know how important that fund it is from the european side housing and as you have mentioned it we have, as a European Union, support housing projects uh, regarding to homeless people. What about housing first? Um, Commissioner Schmidt is a big fan. He said that. Uh, I will push him to, to go ahead with that we are focused on people without home. Women, homeless women, oh, women without home or roof above the head. So the 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 woman issue the gender issue is now very important we have to finance projects uh related to women now the crisis or the support against the consequences is is male focused we support the car industry we support the, the huge industry the huge companies in germany we called it abwrackprämie of course i'm a member of the trade union and I appreciate and I welcome in that the trade union is our partner. We have to work together. That's that's true. But we we are, we please don't forget that we have to support the people and not only cars. And that must be clear in our communication as well. So minimum wage we have to push forward. Minimum income mm, we have to push forward. I haven't talked about the UBI. That's another issue. I'm quite of a fan of it. Uh, what about people who are not able to work? That's a large number in the European Union. We need a welfare state in the uh, the European Union must be a social welfare state. Maybe that's on the communication line as well. So poverty, fighting against poverty, what um, Albana said, must be our main target otherwise we're going to lose the european union and the same mistakes we made in 2008 and 9 um supporting car industry or the huge industry um we have to 
change that, there are changes, I see the changes. So let me positive or, or I try to end and finish in a positive way. Um, there are new lines, new ways we have to go on. And but our target group must be uh, the poor society and um, we have to, to address on them. Thank you. Uh, maybe before I give the floor to Rutger, I wanted to just, uh, because one of the questions who came in the mid-time uh, is they are asking how long it will take to get directly on minimum income implemented. And this is, uh, uh, with your own experience now, do you think that this is really feasible? Because from what you said, uh, you have somehow some doubts. And how do you think, and this is a question also for, uh, uh, for Ernest, but without opening too much, uh, do you really think that we are entering in a period where this will come? Because pressure will be enough and, uh, and the, the, the European Commission has to realize that we cannot really uh, ignore that. Ernest, me, I don't care. You can start. Okay. Um, Ursula von der Leyen pr um, promised us the minimum wage. When she introduced herself in our group, I was surprised last year. And now she um, pushed a bit away. But I am... Yeah, pushing is important. Uh, I hope that we will have a European minimum wage in that period um, in the upcoming three max four years uh, that's my wish May, i hope it come earlier um but i hope that we in the end in the next three four years uh one uh, second one bit <laughs> really very short ernest before uh, Ruged, uh takes the floor uh, well, I can I can only say that the, I I see an intention from the side of the Commission to be a bit more uh, active on the on social matters lately. So that's what I said that they already speeded up the minimum uh, the minimum salary issue. It's true that on the directive on minimum income, probably this will uh, come a bit later. But I think we should keep the pressure because, as as Catherine said, there are many member states who do not have still. A scheme of minimum income Spain just recently introduced it and this is an instrument we really need so I think that we should have be pushing for that thank you so last but not least <laughs> um, uh, Rutger um, I mean I had prepared a few questions for you also as a vice mayor of a very big city um, at the same moment uh, I would like really we have a big interest to have uh, a little bit a reaction of what you heard until now and uh, maybe this will give you a little bit more the possibility to broaden uh, your uh, uh, your comments and your presentation and let's not forget that you are coming from a country which uh, was quite active on uh, on uh, really uh, somehow blocking the solidarity at the EU level. I know that you have a different position uh, and we are extremely proud for that, uh, that our parties have a different position. Uh, but your perspective as the vice mayor, but also coming from this country with your experience on this discussion will be great. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you very much uh, for having me here. I will. Um, uh, give you some uh, some insights more from the local level. You were saying uh, Amsterdam is a big city, but uh, we're quite tiny if you look at it uh, from a European perspective. Um, uh, but what what we have seen uh, in this, this COVID uh, crisis is, I think that uh, there's a sharpening in uh, uh, already existing uh, inequalities. Um, what we have seen is that there are, uh, uh, for example, if you look at the issues uh, regarding the homeless, if you look at issues regarding undocumented, if you look at issues of uh, uh, precarious workers, we have seen that um, uh, the, 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 the vulnerability of these groups uh, uh, stayed hidden uh, as long as there was uh, some of uh, some work, uh, but uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with, with, with uh, what, what they, we call the intelligent lockdown, uh, a lot of work has, uh, has disappeared or has stopped uh, temporarily or maybe uh, even permanent. 
uh, we have a growing uh, um, uh, unemployment uh, and a lot of uh, discussions also about uh, uh, basic security. I was very happy uh, to hear uh, uh, the, the, the universal basic income. It's a discussion uh, which uh, for the first time in uh, uh, the history of my, no, not for the, in the history or in the recent history of my party is also being discussed again, uh, which, uh, which makes me very happy. But what we see is that our, um, uh, this crisis has, 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 has sharpened uh, uh, already uh, uh, um, uh, divisions on the labor market, for example. And uh, uh, we should, if, if we're not able to change the way uh, labor relationships are in the Netherlands, we have way too much people working in flexible contracts uh, with hardly any social uh, security at all. If we're not able to change that, if we're not able to restructure our economy, for example, if you look at Amsterdam, we're, there, we're way too much focused on tourism. Uh, and we need uh, the help of the European Union to, uh, to, to ban budget flights. Uh, um, but we really need to restructure the economy as such. We really need to 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 re to re um, uh, to revalue uh, the public sector, uh, uh, and what I think that uh, needs to be done is also, uh, and and I liked it. Uh, jobs cannot solve poverty. Poverty, I agree, uh, and we need a huge poverty plan. But still, jobs are very important, uh, uh, and we uh, I am working on 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 employment plans, uh, also from uh, uh, um, uh, let's say the the energy transition. So a Green New Deal kind of, uh, uh, of plans, because uh, we strongly feel that uh, there are a lot of chances uh, uh, there. Um, but also, we, uh, I'm working on uh, uh, plans for special groups. For example, if you look at who has been hit the most, we need to make plans for young people. We need to make plans for, if you look at the, uh, from an Amsterdam context, especially young people with a migrant background. If we don't focus on that if we don't focus on the most precarious and the most and if we don't more focus on the youth if we don't focus on people with a migrant background uh, they will be lost uh, uh, and i think that it's very 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 important uh, uh, that we do that um, and maybe because you were also also saying uh, and asking me how uh, uh, we uh, could, could uh, what we could do and, and for my position from the netherlands as, a, as my position from Amsterdam, I really like to stress that the budget cuts on the ESF uh, uh, are terrible. They, 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 they will really uh, hurt uh, uh, a lot of our social programs. Um, as Amsterdam, we wrote a letter together with Barcelona, with Paris, uh, uh, about uh, access for cities uh, uh, to, 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 to committee funds. Because uh, what we see is that, that sometimes, in a sense, um, you think there's a conflict between southern countries and the Netherlands. I'm in sometimes in a full scale war with my national government because uh, uh, we try to do all kinds of stuff uh, within social welfare, within employment, uh, and, and, and uh, it leads to a lot of conflict. Uh, and we would really, really, really love to do uh, a lot more. Um, I, don't, I don't think that I have to stress the position of my party, of the Green Party uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, I was really, really ashamed uh, uh, of, of, the, of the position that uh, the, the, the Dutch government uh, took. Um, what else can I say? I was ashamed. Uh, what's there more to say? Yeah. Uh, so um, thank you very much. I, I just wanted to uh, to to just come back on this question of the of the role of the mayors. Uh, because you have been, as you mentioned, active with uh, the Barcelona mayor and some others. Uh, just for your information, and I'm sure also you know that the Visegrad countries, uh, with very much active the mayor of uh, Budapest and the mayor of, uh, uh, of uh, um, uh, Warsaw and some others, Bratislava and Riga, they uh, held hold a press conference uh, already this week, uh, which uh, we hosted and we were extremely active asking for several reasons uh, so not only because sometimes uh, when you get directly the funds you can really use them in a more appropriate way and with less bureaucracy 
but also because of the fundamental rights issues, because we know that in some countries, if uh, cities will not have access directly, somebody like Orban will really block them for uh, with his autocratic attitude in order really not to give the possibility to mayors and to citizens to do their own job. So, and uh, I would like also to say, nobody knows, but myself, I'm an urban and regional planner. And for years, uh, decades now, I, I, I really wrote also some books on that. Uh, I could not understand why the European Union has really so many difficulties to realize that coming close to the urban and regional realities, this is a real service to the citizens. And, uh, and you avoid a lot of corruption, you can really um, develop much more in a, in a real scale the project. So more your voices will be raised, more we have also the opportunity uh, to, make it, uh, to make it happen. And um, we are very happy to announce that we have a few minutes more. So they gave me with the stretching 10 more minutes, I hope. And uh, I would like just to bring a few extra issues on the table uh, because, uh, and then maybe I start with the non green <laughs> uh, people. Um, so with you, Ludovic, and afterwards uh, with Albena on uh, the question of tax justice so and especially what is uh, your position also when it comes uh, ludovic you mentioned the own resources because part of the financing will be of course the the new uh, 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 resources on taxation in addition of course with the big companies and all the rest so i would like to know uh, what is uh, your position as trade union on, uh, on this issue, and uh, same question to Albena. Ludovic. Okay, there are some technical problems. So, uh, yes, Philippe, could you, yes. You, you can respond, Ludovic? Okay. So I think that uh, they have turned uh, off uh, the audio, so that is uh, not nice. But <laughs> let's start maybe with uh, Albena, and then uh, I give you the floor, Ludovic, after. All right. Um, you can hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, tax justice. Um, yes, it has become very uh, popular, uh, this lo uh, slogan, tax the rich. Uh, in Britain, uh, the top 1% pay 30% of the taxes, 44% of adults do not pay any taxes. We should remember that the welfare state was supported by massive taxes to everybody. This is the, the, the core of the, of the of European welfare state. Everybody should contribute. So um, when the Yellow Vests were protesting in France and they said, we want to pay less tax, Macron said, yes, great you will pay less tax. This is not a solution. The solution is everybody to pull in. This is my answer. Thank you. And uh, uh, Ludovic, I think that you have to unmute yourself. We don't hear you. Okay, you hear me? Absolutely, yes. Okay, okay, <laughs> so great. Uh, yeah, for us, it's uh, really essential that uh, we have a fair uh, taxation system. We could, uh, for example, work on a common, uh, uh, adopting a common consolidated corporate tax base, a financial transaction uh, tax, a digital tax, or tax on highest revenue or, and excessive wealth. So there are a lot of possibilities to make contribute those who have. And it's uh, because, yeah, it's not the moment to put Put uh, the weight on the on the workers and the citizens for a crisis. Uh, we are uh, really uh, feeling uh, hard. Uh, so uh, yeah, I would just say that. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, I will uh, maybe not repeat what is uh, the strategy of uh, the European Greens because we know we are really uh, fighting uh, for years uh, when it comes to the question of. Uh, 
tax justice, uh, avoiding uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the whole abuses of what's going on also with tax evasion and with fraud. Uh, we have been um, very very active in the European Parliament, and just maybe as an announcement, thanks to our work, very soon we will have a subcommittee in the European Parliament under the Economic Committee, which will uh, take care of uh, the taxation. And I'm sure that Ernest will be uh, probably one of the candidates <laughs> at the same moment. Finally, we will really be able to go through, uh, let's say, this real issue of uh, equal distribution to our societies uh, from everybody and uh, certainly you need to have a European framework on that because without the European framework when it comes to taxation issues then you are really are not able to tackle the problems. I remember uh, some years ago I was in contact with the Commission in a public debate and I was asking them when it comes to the Greek cases but why you are not really uh, intervene to tax the rich people or the people who left uh, Greece uh, with all their money in Switzerland and you are really squeeze everybody that you can squeeze in Greece and you arrive at a level that you have uh, uh, salaries in our days, even in our days, of 500 or 600 euros just because uh, they, they, they are not targeting the rich people. And the very simple response of uh, the European Commission, the person who was present in, uh, in this uh, panel, he said, we have no uh, competence on that. And because we have no competence, we know there is a problem, but we can absolutely do nothing on that. So indeed, uh, there is quite a lot of uh, work to be done. Uh, maybe before I make some very short uh, remarks of conclusion, I will just give to each of you the floor for one minute to send a political message uh, to uh, also our audience and also, uh, let's say, um, encourage us, all of us, to continue to work on something we strongly believe, on the social Europe. So uh, I will start with Ernest and then I will do the whole tour and I will conclude. And thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, just maybe 10 seconds on this issue of taxation. One of the positive things of the recovery fund is that the design of, of how the, the debt will be issued, how it will be uh, paid, it will be decided in the future. And at the end of the day, in the next uh, financial uh, framework, member states will have to decide whether they contribute with the national budgets on that or whether we go for more own resources. And that means on blocking some of the taxation funds that are blocked. So in a way, the facility puts pressure in on blocking some of the taxation measures that have been blocked for many years. And this is, I think, one of the positive things. I would just like to say, uh, to, end, uh, to, to come to an end on, the, on that panel, that I think that the, our economies and the European economy will go into a, a very important transformation in the coming uh, year. And it is up to us to pick up that political battle to really, really push finally towards a, a green and social economic model for the European Union. This is, let's not take that for granted. Everybody says now, yeah, but finally now, we will build a more resilient society. Well, we were already told that in 2008 it didn't happen, on the contrary. So, uh, but there is a political battle. And I think that the progressive forces, the Greens, we need to be uh, united and together in order to make this change in the positive direction. Thank you. Uh, Ludovic? Yeah, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, fine. So I would say that uh, we need a Europe that deliver on social uh, and ecological transformation. So it's not enough to have a communication or a roadmap. We will need concrete action. I would uh, list uh, some that are really important for us. Delivery riders, for example, they need right to organize, to collective bargaining, to respect of working conditions, to access to social protection. Uh, workers and unemployed people need an effective right to continuous training. Low paid workers need wage increase. We need also digitalization that improve our working conditions, not that led to massive dismissals. Coal miners need a future they can believe in with high quality jobs. Young people will need quality jobs offer. We will need also to defeat the gender pay gap and defeat racism. So a lot of challenges. Thank you. Catherine? 
Uh, Catherine, we uh, you have turned uh, off the audio. Uh, sorry, can you try to turn on? Okay, before then, uh, no problem. We go to uh, Albena and then we try to help you on solving, uh, solving the problem. Albena. Microphone on. Mm -mm. Yeah, but the same. Uh, no, but I think that I hear, uh, I hear, I hear you, Catherine. Hello. Yes. Now you can hear me. Great. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, I guess fear is a bad advisor, and and we are on the right way. Uh, I see that we have many NGOs. We can work together and show on the street what the climate movement was or is, can be the, the social movement as well. So uh, the people are solidar. Uh, we have to focus on the people uh, who are the weakest, the poorest. And um, so, and, and social justice, that's the glue uh, who keeps the European Union together. So uh, otherwise we're going to lose it, but I'm not afraid of it. I'm always a positive thinking person. So it's a battle. But with um, our allies, we can we can win that fight. I I am convinced on it. Thank you, Albena. Okay. Now, even in the current context, um, our economies have a, a, a incredible pulling power. Uh, I think that the new technologies. Uh, science uh, can help us all produce our life with less work uh, and with great opportunities for all. The problem was and remains is that those opportunities are constrained to very few actors and the risks are downloaded to society. So we need to redesign the whole economy and we, we have the tools to uh, fortify our societies to think about the commons not in terms of individual terms, uh, indeed, the poor and the commons, and then we will have a resilient society. Thank you. Uh, Rutger, are you around? I think that uh, he left us. Uh, then uh, maybe finally from our side, my, my side, I would like really to thank uh, all of you. Uh, this panel also with the intervention of uh, uh, Runger really um, make me uh, feel uh, very positive and also with a lot of energy. There is a lot of fight in front of us, but I realize now that this is a real fight for all Europeans, all Greens, all over Europe. It, it is not anymore, let's say, the item of the South, because everybody is confronted in different ways in such a situation. And I am convinced that uh, we will really be able more and more. And therefore, also, Ludovic, uh, uh, I thank you particularly also as, uh, as our guest and also, uh, of course, uh, Albena. But uh, Ludovic, you really show us that uh, the trade unions are very close to our agenda, to the green agenda. And they see this as the only way forward because we cannot only think in a short term, we have to think in a long term. We have a big responsibility to the future generations and we have really to be able to deliver. So with these words, I thank you very, very much. I send you a big hug and uh, we will continue uh, our uh, fights and discussions in, in another way. Thank you. Bye-bye.